we're doing Fashion for Relief, which will all the, don um, the funds that we raise will go to the Rotary Club for the um, flood disaster that happened in July in Gloucestershire. And what really got me and my attention was seeing all the images in the paper in July, even though I wasn't here, and knowing that kids in Hull couldn't get to school at the beginning of the school term and having to like congregate in the, in the gymnasium. And basically, Fashion for Relief is all the fashion world collaborating, getting together. Designers all over the world donate outfits and celebrities and models and actresses and football stars, Rio Ferdinand, uh, all walk in the runway tomorrow night wow. um, to, for this cause. It's and, part of London Fashion Week. Yeah, and we do it with eBay. And actually, if London Fashion Week didn't put us on the schedule, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm really happy and grateful to have you on this show to let the public know, because the public is what makes this show, because usually the public are not able to go to the fashion shows, it's just the editors and VIPs, and the public is who we want to, to come to this show. So we're really, we would love the support if you could please get tickets on ticketmaster.co.uk. So they go to Ticketmaster. Okay, who will yeah. they see if they come along? Oh my God, you're going to see Erin O'Connor, myself, Claudia Schiffer, um, Tyson Beckford, Rio Ferdinand, Christian Slater, Lily Cole, Lily Donaldson. Surprise guests? There are lots of surprise guests. This is not your normal fashion show. And it's amazing the people that have wanted to support their time and just walk down the runway and do this. And I think, you know, the fashion world have always been kind of pinpointed for not doing anything, and we are. This is what we're doing to okay. give back. Tell me about the T-shirt. The T-shirt has been made by Christopher Bailey, exclusively for Fashion for Relief, and you've got it on the back. You can see Fashion for Relief. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. No, turn around again. We didn't oh, quite see okay. it. Stand there while you're talking to me. Go on. Fashion for Relief. Yeah. And it's at Burberry's. It's in the Burberry windows in Bond Street, and um, you can go on BurberryLine.com on the online.com, and you can purchase the tickets. And all sales of those T-shirts go towards the charity also. Okay. It's quite expensive to come along to the show, though. We're now at the um, 100 is 100 pounds, yes. Oh, okay, so it's not too bad. No. Unless you want to sit in the front row, it's probably a bit more it's expensive. It's a bit higher, there, but it? I mean, you know what? We need, the, 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 the public is what's going to make this show, because when we did this in New York, we did, I did it with her, for Hurricane Katrina. Again, I say we, because it's not myself, it's all collaboration of all of us. It was just the most amazing vibration, because everyone's cheering, and it's just so much more fun. You know, it's just, it feels like how the shows used to be, because they're not the same anymore. <laughs> why, do, why do you think that is? I have no idea. I mean, we've lost greats like Johnny Versace and, you know, Johnny Versace's show. I remember people used to be scrambling for tickets to go to that show. I mean, Lee McQueen still has that in Eggman, so does John Galliano. But it's not the same where, um, you know, people are like, you know, it's like, it was a big spectacle. And also, all five of us were together on the runway at the same time. Mm. So that was a lot of fun. Has London Fashion Week changed? Um, it's still very much in the public eye, but it has changed a bit, hasn't it? I mean, all I that mean, controversy I, I with size zero models with and IMG things. I and worldwide, and what I, you know, I think London has the most amazing designers, and they're, they're just unique in what they do, things that you can't find anywhere else. And I just think they, it needs to be made bigger because the support, I mean, they're just amazing people here. Mm. And all, I must say, all those young designers who really can't afford to donate an outfit have. Mm. I'm so grateful to them for that. You've been in this industry since you were 15. 20, so yes, yes, 21 yes, years. Is, I know. <laughs> you were first sort of spotted when you were 14. Yeah. What do you think, when they were saying that th 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 some of these models are a bit too young to be on the catwalk, what do you well, think? Well, I mean, my mother said no initially when I wanted to be on the, um, and do modelling. She was so excited by it all. She said no, and understandably so, but then, you know, month after my exams, the month before my 15th, 16th birthday, she said, okay, you can go and do this shoot, which is a British L. And, you know, as I was saying, and I said this week, it's like, we're not all developed at that age. I mean, if, you know, the child... You say child, developed at that developed, age. Developed, <laughs> I mean, I'm still not developed. I've got to wear push-up bras, but, you know, it's like... I mean, we all do love, we oh, all do, we're God, not all supermodels. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to happen any other way, but um, no, I just, you know, if you, I mean, if your child is, you know, healthy and buxom and, you know, you think that she's able, then I mean, it's, I mean, then it's up to, it's really up to the parent. But I mean, there are these rules now that have been enforced by the British Fashion Council, I understand, and by the agencies, and they have to make a prevention. This is their way of making an education for people in the prevention. And if that's the way what they've got to do, they've got to do. Mm. I mean, you know, there's healthy food backstage now, there's no alcohol, so things have changed. And no drugs, is it going to be drug tests and all that sort of things as well? And that's what I heard, mm. yeah. Good idea? 
I think so. I'm someone in recovery, so it's a good idea for me, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to, I really, actually, this is another topic, but I just want to say I'm really fighting, and I've been talking to the um, Minister of Education, Mr. Lemmy, about putting rehabilitation in school programs, like an educational system, like three hours a week, because I think just saying no is not enough. You have to know why, what it does to your body, what it's going to affect, what it is that you will say, well, I shouldn't touch that. Not just no, no is not good enough. You get rebellious kids like myself that's going to say, no, I'm still going to touch it. You need to have education and pre prevention of what it does to you, how it can affect you, how you can become addicted, and how you become an alcoholic. Why did you say yes? I never said yes. I just was like a rebellious child and was like, I'm going to try. I mean, I had no tools to know, of knowledge to know. If I had tools of knowledge, I might have thought twice. So, what you did know, it do to you? Basically did nothing to me. It just made me feel miserable in the end. And it was just a way for me to escape and escape, really escape from nothing. Because it's all there, big and bright, the next day. So, I mean, I really am going to be lobbying for that mm. for... Would um, you get involved with that? Would you go around to schools and say, you know, this I is want what the it is? I need the education minister on my side because it's the, um, the alcohol and drugs taken in teens have gone up, I think, 35% in this country. Mm. So, I mean, I really want that to change. I mean, I don't have kids yet, and if I do, I want to know that they can go to school and be taught that. I mean, why not every mother and father can afford to send their children to treatment? Mm. So why shouldn't it be in school? Apparently that's what you've been saying. One of your wishes still to do, apart from being in a Brit flick, I believe you're going to be in, you want to be a mum. I'd love to be a mum. You're a mum, I heard. I am a mum. <laughs> what, what appeals to you most? Oh, I just... Do you I, not feel fulfilled not being a mum? Do I don't you, think a woman's really never 100% a woman until you become a mother. That's what I understand. So I'm God willing, my time will come. I'm not in a rush. Would you let a daughter of yours be on the runway? That's a decision I can't. I live one day at a time. That's a decision I couldn't not foresee her making right now. But I mean, you know, I'm not going to stop her from doing what she wants to do. You're so lovely. How do you get this reputation for being difficult? I don't know. I mean, I'm very honest and I say how I feel. And it's not always to everyone's liking. You know, people don't get what they want, they make a criticism of you. But people who know me, and that's what I care about most, and love me and are close to me, they know who I am, and that's what's most important. Mm. But you have been, you've, you were found guilty in New York. Absolutely, you? I admitted that, and I, I feel remorseful for it, and I, something that I'm correcting. I do, I'm in therapy, I work on myself each day, and I try to do what's best in taking care of myself. I can't be in certain places anymore and go to certain places. It's not that I'm getting old and boring, it's just that it's time to grow up. And I, I didn't want to grow up. Who wants to grow up? What makes you laugh? I laugh pretty easy. <laughs> I, um, if I don't have a smile on my face every five minutes, something's wrong. Um, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm not someone that keeps resentments and keeps anger for hours and days. No, I get it out and confrontate it, and I move on. And you're going up to Chicksbury and Gloucestershire to, to look after yeah, people. Yeah, and the Rotary Club, I have to tell you, they're the nicest people and organisation that I've met. And I love them also because they're non-political, but they're such wonderful people. Mm. And everyone says, there's the two of us together, how does that work? They're just amazing. And I would love to do anything else that I can to help them what they do. How long are you going to continue being a supermodel for? I don't know. I mean, I'm quite blessed now to be still here and be able to use what I have become in my life to do things like I'm doing. And blessed to have someone in my life like Mr. Mandela, who's just, been, just left here. He's the best man and We've got earth. pictures of you with Nelson Mandela. Because oh, you've always best. done work with children's charities, really, before. I, yeah, I have since 94 with him. And... I mean, as I said, and I will say again, I'm not someone who picks up kids to, you know, be seen on television using children. I don't want to use children that way. Africa is not a trend for me. It's something I've cared about passionately for many years and will continue supporting him and his foundation and his fund. Okay, and this event on Thursday night? Fashion for Relief. We need your support. Please come and enjoy the show. It's a once, once in a lifetime in London. And we really want the public to have the insight of what Fashion Week is all about. Okay. And just tell me very quickly about going into movies. Going into movies? I'm just doing this little thing for a friend of mine. It's not... I mean, there is something more substantial in um, January, which I love the, 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 the theme of what it's about. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I am a model from South London. I'm a South London chick, and I'm going to remain Are you saying South London, though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>